today. Come on, we want God's presence to fill this place, fill our lives today. Oh, come on, yes. Come on, worship him. Worship him today. Everyone in worship and one of 
rapture and one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every one of worship and one accord. Every praise. Anybody want to praise him today? Hallelujah. Has he been good to you? Is he worthy of your worship today? Is he worthy of your worship today? Hallelujah. Every praise to our God. Every word spoken to our God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord.
Anybody feel the presence of the Lord in this service today? Come on, do you feel the presence of the Lord? Are you giving everything? Are you giving everything? Hallelujah. I'm here to worship you, Lord. I'm here to lift you up in this house today. Oh, come on. Come on, why don't you get him on your mind right now? Why don't you get him on your thoughts right now? Why don't you push everything else out of the way? Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Would you reach over if you can and pray with somebody around you? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, Lord, in your mighty name, in your mighty name. Oh, I hear you breaking chains. I know you can break chains. I know you can change life. I know you can turn things around. I know you are the answer. I know, Lord, my God, I need help in my life today. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated today. Oh, my God, break some chains, break some chains, break some chains, break some chains, break some holds, break some habits, break some addictions, break some things, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, my God. How many wants God to break some things today? How many wants God to break some things today? Hallelujah, my Lord, in your mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on. Do you really want God to break some things? Do you really want God to do something? Do you really, really want God, hallelujah, to do something in your life today? Come on, hallelujah. Oh, it's more than just saying it. It's more than just saying it today. You gotta let God do it. Hallelujah, my God, my God. Oh, hallelujah, my Lord, in your mighty name. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Lord, do it in our lives today. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise your mighty name. Hallelujah. Want God to have his way today. Want God to touch today. Hallelujah. I know, hallelujah, that we, we are busy about many things, but if ever there's a time to stop and, and take some inventory of our lives and search our motives and hearts, uh, because the Bible said there's a way that seemeth right. Uh, there's a lot of things that might seem right, but to the end, it's death, you know. Uh, I don't want to do things that seem right. I want to do right things. I just don't want to seem right. I just don't want to just look right. Hallelujah. I just don't want to just dress right. I want to be right. Praise God. I want to be right. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Hallelujah. I have much in my heart. And I pray that you stay with me through this message today. And I don't know how long or how short. Or I, I, there's so many things that's in my spirit that I want to try to bring out today. And would you stay with me for a little while today? Would you stay? Would you help me today? Come on. Would you help push me today? Hallelujah. Climb to the end of your chair and kind of help push me. Praise God. Hallelujah. To stir our hearts today. Stir our lives today. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, open to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 10 and 21. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to need you today, church. Praise God. I need some amens and, and pushing and saying, come on. Hallelujah. Don't fall asleep on me on this message. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 10 and 21. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Hallelujah. For a little while today, if you'll be with me, I want to preach. Whose table are you eating from? Whose table are you eating from? Would you lift your hands today and ask God to talk to you? Would you ask God to show up in this place and do a work in this sanctuary? Would you ask God to stir some hearts, open some eyes, challenge some people today? Would you ask God to let his anointing break every yoke and every shackle of the enemy today? Hallelujah. If you believe me today, come on. I want you to clap your hands to the Lord. Glory, 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 glory to your mighty name. Praise the Lord. You may be seated today. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know before you today are two tables. And these two tables are in competition for your worship. These two tables today that are set before us, they are in competition with one another. I want you to know one wants to give you life and the other wants to give you death. One wants your time and the other wants your time but I'm going to tell you it matters today which table you eat from you cannot eat from the Lord's table and eat from the demon's table you got to make your mind up today what table you're going to eat at for whatever table you eat at is what you will respond to and act to I don't know about you but I want to respond to the thing Things of the Lord. I do not want to respond to the things of this world. It bothers me that people can go to a football game, baseball game, and scream and jump and holler. But when it comes to the Lord's table, they sit quiet, hands down, and mouths closed. I'm going to tell you 
what. It's whatever you respond to. I'm going to tell you, I will respond to the things of God. I will respond. Hallelujah. Two tables in competition, one in your time, one in your heart, one in your mind. I'm going to tell you, and they do have an effect on you. If you eat from the enemy's table, you will become more like the enemy. If you eat from the Lord's table, you become more like the Lord. I can always tell where people act where they've been eating. I can always tell by their spirit where they've been eating. You might not say a thing. You might dress right. But somewhere there's going to be attributes that show up where you're eating. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you today, we've heard it all our lives about two dogs, the white dog and the black dog, and whatever dog you feed is going to be the strongest. I'm here to tell you today, you've got to be careful what you eat. You've got to be careful what you digest. You've got to be careful what you let in. I'm going to tell you today, everything the devil has, it's not bad. I said, everything the devil has is not bad. But listen to me. He might have some good, but you got to weigh what that good is. If that good that the enemy has takes your time away from God, then it is bad. You listen to me, hallelujah. Everything out there ain't bad, but if it takes you away from God, if it takes you away from prayer, if it takes you away from commitment, then it is bad. I'm gonna tell you today, you better be careful where you eat at today. Oh, it has an effect on your life. Hallelujah. You see, table, a table provides a place of fellowship. You listen to me. You're going to fellowship with God or you're going to fellowship with the enemy. You're going to do either one. I'm going to tell you, but you cannot hang on to two masters. You cannot serve two tables. You got to serve one or the other. It provides fellowship. A table is a place where you spend time together. You see in our day and time, it's been robbed. The table's been robbed. You two families sat down at the table. It was centered at the table. Everything was about the table. You talked to your children at the table. You talked to your family at the table, but it's been robbed. Now people sit at the table, but they're on their phone talking to somebody else by texting. I'm going to tell you what, friend. You wonder why families are in distress? You wonder why homes are in distress? They lost their table. Oh, families, it was all about the table, setting the table, eating at the table. But when you lose the table, you lose a place where you come together at. A table is a place where you share your heart to one another. A table is where you build memories with one another. A table, it provides security. The table provides provides belonging to one another. A table is a place that you are accepted. A table, I'm going to tell you, is a place where you share his life or you share his life. I'm telling you today, you got to make up your mind. You cannot hang on to both tables any longer. You cannot keep, come nibble at this table and nibble at that table. I'm going to tell you, you got to make your mind up Today, I'm going to eat at the Lord's table and his table only. <clears throat> when you say, when you sit at God's table, you pick up his attributes. 
you pick up the things of God. When you eat at the Lord's table, you began to become more holy. You become more righteous. You become more faithful. When you eat at the Lord's table, I'm going to tell you, you take on his attributes. His attributes is love. His attributes is joy. His attributes is peace. His attributes is long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithful, meekness, and temperance. I'm going to tell you what today. Hallelujah. When you eat at this table, you begin to be kind to people. You love people. You got joy in your life. You got peace in your life. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you. Oh, what table are you eating at today? I'm going to tell you. That's the fruits of the Spirit. I'm telling somebody today, you better take a list of your fruit and see if some of it's missing. I'm telling you, you better get back to the table of the Lord. Oh, listen to me today. When you sit at the devil's table, you lose your spiritual appetite for God. You lose your spiritual appetite for God. The things of God doesn't interest you anymore. Reading your Bible doesn't interest you anymore. Eating from the things of God doesn't rest you. Become bored with it. And when you get bored and you lose your appetite, you go looking for something else to fulfill your appetite and the enemy has got a table. I said the enemy has got a table. I'm telling you today you cannot become bored with the things of God. I'm going to tell you you need to read you need to reconnect yourself with God today. You see when you sit at the devil's table you pick up demonic attributes. You pick up demonic attitudes. I'm going to tell you what. The more you eat from the enemy's table, you might start off nibbling and thinking well, I got away with it. But I'm going to tell you what. The more you eat of the enemy's table, the more you don't want God's table. The more you lose the excitement for God's table. You lose the excitement for God. You lose the passion for God. I'm going to tell you what scares me today in our day and hour. Too many people are introducing their kids to what the enemy has got to offer instead of what God has got to offer. No wonder kids don't want to come to church. No wonder. I'm going to tell you what when you introduce them to movies and TV and music that's not a God why would they want the things of God you listen to me it scares me to death because listen too many parents are breaking off little pieces and letting their children taste things and think well when they get older I won't let them do it I'm going to tell you what you let them taste it now they might not ever stop it I'm going to tell you what you got to keep them away from that enemy's table I said you got to keep them away you got to keep your family away from that because everything the enemy he has will lead to shackles. It will lead to bondage. It will lead to death. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you start letting the enemy lead you away from God, you lead you away just by the, the enemy ain't going to come in and try to make you eat the whole loaf, but he just gives you little things to tease you and seduce you and pull you away from God. Matthew 21 and 12 says, and when Jesus entered into the temple and he drove out those that were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. Now listen to me. Somehow church got messed up. Somehow church got messed up because listen, there are people selling things that didn't have raw that was right. They were selling, they were selling sheep that were covered up that had blemishes. They were giving 
sacrifices that were not true. They were giving false stuffs. I'm going to tell you what. You know what makes God mad for you to come and tell him you're giving right things, but it's not right. You know what, friend? You can get messed up. Church got messed up. I'm going to tell you. And God told her he overturned them tables and kicked it out. I'm going to tell you what today. You've got to be careful. You can get messed up at church. They was changing the sacrifice. They was doing wrong things, trying to cover it up and say it was right. You listen to me today. When you eat at the enemy's table, that's when you will start conniving and, and, and doing loopholes and finding loopholes trying to do what you want to do. But I'm going to tell you, you can't. You've got to be careful because it pulls you away from what's right. It pulls you away that you come to a place. Yes, they were in the temple. Yes, they should have been praying. Yes, it was a place of prayer. But I'm going to tell you, when you change it from a place of prayer and it comes a place of talking and walking and, and just listening to one another instead of listening to God. There's a danger. <laughs> you see today you got to figure out where you eating at today. You got to figure out what table you're at today. Te temple got messed up. Church got messed up. Sacrifice got is your sacrifice got messed up? You used to sacrifice more for God, but now you sacrifice for the enemy. You sacrifice your prayer life because you're spending too much time doing some other things that wouldn't sin, but it would lead to sin. You listen to me today. Please, please, listen. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my heart and my soul, and I'm, I'm going to lay it out there. And I, you, you might get mad, but that's all right. I, I, I'm not worried about your madness, but I'm going to tell you what. Some of you spend more time over here flirting with the enemy than you do talking to Jesus. You spend more time over here with the world than you do with the Lord that saved you. I'm telling you today, you've got to be careful. Oh, hallelujah. Even even Jesus, oh hallelujah, even that church, even when Jesus was having church, I'm going to tell you, Judas was there, Judas was there, and Jesus said, one of you are going to betray me. Now listen, they walked with him, they saw the miracles, they saw everything. He said, one of you is not being right, and I'm going to tell you, it's the one that I sup with, it's the one that's at the table, it was the one. I'm going to tell you what and when Jesus had took it and broken it and supped it and handed it to Judas the Bible said after Judas took the sup I'm going to tell you right there in the church with the living God Satan entered into his heart you listen to me taking the sup from Jesus why does it bother us so bad? Take something from the hand of Jesus and not be truthful in your heart when the enemy will enter in. You come to church and you can take the songs and you can take the praise and you got to be careful because you can allow things enter in your heart. The end, I'm going to tell you right there in the presence of Jesus, Satan entered into Judah's heart and he betrayed. I'm going to tell you today, he was supping. Oh, it seemed like Judas would have been a, a different kind of person. I'm taking it from the hand of God. But I'm going to tell you what, you got to be careful because you can come to church and you can sub with God and go home and live with the enemy. Well, you listen to me. If Satan can do that at the table of Jesus, what can he do at your table? What can he do in your life? Oh, it'll make you want to betray 
betray the Lord. Betray the Lord. Oh, uh, just betray, lie about everything. Be a deceiver. But I'm going to tell you what. Hallelujah. I can't have that. Oh, I don't want Satan to enter in. I want to keep Jesus in. Oh, when you sup with the devil, it leaves you in a hopeless life. When you eat with the devil, I'm going to tell you, it's out there. If you want video, it's out there. You want YouTube, it's out there. You don't even have to rent a movie. It's right there. I'm going to tell you, and you eat it, and you eat it, and you eat it. And the more you eat, the more you want. The more you take in what the enemy's offering, the more you want. You'll never be satisfied because when you walk away from the good table and the right table, it leaves a void in your life. I'm telling this today, church. Oh, listen to me, church. I'm going to tell you, some of you, you're eating at the wrong table. eating at the wrong table it leaves your life oh hopeless when you sup with the devil it leaves your spirit in a negative spirit negative about everything negativity negative oh some of you so negative oh it's just bad it's a bad day oh I'm sick I'm bad I, I, I don't feel good oh I, I, I can't live for God oh it's too hard I can't pray oh I'm too bad I'm ne- this negative I'm going to tell you everything I'm about God is positive. Everything about the enemy is negative. I'm going to tell you, I, you know how I know where you eat at? If all you can do is talk about how negative things are, you're at the wrong table. But oh, I can tell you, when somebody been eating over here, they believe, they got faith, they believe God can do anything. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, negative, so negative. Church ain't going nowhere. Ain't going to have revival. Can't have a move of God. Don't lighten up. You're at the wrong table, buddy. You're at the wrong table. Oh, I don't like the music. Oh, it, there's too, it, it's too hot. It's too cold. Oh, just negative, negative, negative. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. But when you eat the bread and you drink from his cup, no wonder people still struggle in his lives. You know why? When you eat from the enemy's table, you, you, you begin to take on his attributes and you begin to feel that struggle. You struggle with everything. You struggle in your marriage. You struggle in your finances. You struggle in your life. You struggle at church. You struggle on your job. I'm going to tell you what. Oh, if you're struggling like that, you're eating from the wrong table. Because if you eat it from this table, my Bible said that God makes a way where there seemeth no way. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I'm going to tell you what, hallelujah. Oh, listen to me today. Some of you so negative. Oh, I'm going to tell you, you need to change your attitude. Hallelujah. Oh, when you sit at the devil's table, you share you share when you sit at the devil's table. You know what? You sharing with him. You sharing his sin. You sharing his sin. You sharing his depression. You sharing his hopelessness. You sharing his rebellion. Oh, listen to me. When you eat from the enemy's table, you sharing things with him. Oh, you're open your heart to him. You're open. To, you have that rebellion. You're angry. You know what? It bothers me in this day and time. Oh, everybody says it. News said it. Everybody's angry. Everybody's angry. You know why everybody's angry? Because they're eating from over there. You want an angry spirit? You know, I, you know how I can tell you eating that angry spirit of the devil? Because if I try to tell you quit doing something that's wrong, you get mad at me. You listen to me. If I try to get you to do right, not do this and not go there or not stay out late or get off your phone, you get mad at me. Why? Because I'm trying to pull you away from the devil's table. Man, 
mad, mad, mad about the job, mad about work, mad about your finances, mad, mad, mad. I tell you what, you need to quit eating over there because the more you eat, the madder you're gonna get. People say, well, I just can't control my anger. You can too. You just don't want to. You're mad at the church. You're mad because you can't sing. You're mad because you can't get on the platform. You're angry, angry, angry. I'm going to tell you what. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, you need to stop and think, wait a minute. What am I angry about? I have no reason to be angry at anybody. That's not what my God has called me to be. I'm going to tell you what. It tells me you're eating and you're drinking from the wrong table. You're eating and drinking. I'm going to tell you oh listen to me oh why should anybody in church be angry with somebody else in church I'm not going to be no hurry listen if you, you want to leave you can leave but I'm going to deliver my heart and I'm going to tell you listen hallelujah this ain't your church you need to go somewhere else because listen God hallelujah wants you to come to his table and eat freely but if you're going to try to eat from both tables and come to church and try to live in both worlds you can't do it you're going to be miserable you're going to be hateful hallelujah listen to me oh you're eating at the wrong table Oh, that old rebellion attitude. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to act. You, t- you take on his losing attitude. You see, as you eat at the enemy's table, you're taking on that losing. He lost heaven. He lost heaven when there wasn't no devil. You listen to me. You got that losing attitude. Just lose, 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 lose. I'm going to tell you what. Hallelujah. You got to get rid of that losing attitude. You take on the enemy's judgment because the enemy's got judgment one day and he's going to a devil's hell and he's going to burn. And if you eat from his table, you're going to take that same judgment and you're going to go to a devil's hell and you're going to burn. Oh, listen to me. Oh, you you're going to take on his punishment. You're going to take on his accusing spirit. Oh, I'm going to tell you what. I am so sick of accusing spirits. Some of you, all you do is accuse one another. Oh, it's what they saying about me. You don't even know what they're saying. You're making stories up in your mind and believing lies and thinking they're trying to say something about you. Oh, no, they not. If you'll start eating over here, you wouldn't have that kind of cues and spirit. Oh, it's her fault that I'm not right with God. It's his fault. Well, oh, oh they didn't give me candy in the Sunday school room. Listen, there's people that fall out for less than that. They didn't even shake my hand. They didn't even tell me how, how you doing. You listen to me, that accusing spirit. You're eating from the wrong table, friend. Oh, listen to me. That eating from that table of fear and pride and depression and sickness and death. Eating, oh, hallelujah, and that curse. You know what? When you eat from the world and the things of the world, you make yourself a curse. Make yourself a curse when you should be a blessing. You listen to me. That's why people are so mad. That's why people are so messed up. Oh, hallelujah. You begin to doubt God. Oh, when you eat from the enemy's table, he was a loser. And if you eat with him, you become a loser. Oh, the demons want you to sit at their table. I said the demons, they scream. The world screams. Hollywood screams. Sports of this world screams. You listen to me. It screams, eat at our table. People be so messed up because the football team hogs lost, but don't worry about the lost. Listen to me today. 
Oh, please. Oh, my Lord. I refuse to go to their arenas. I refuse to listen to their song because I want to eat from the right table. I want to eat from the right table. Why, why the enemy wants me to eat at his table? Because he wants me to die. He wants me to die of God. He wants me to die of victory. He wants me to die of the anointing. Oh, listen to me. People's lost their anointing. People's lost their victory. Why? Because they're eating with the enemy. Death disease, and depression. You cannot eat at the Lord's table on Sunday and Wednesdays. Some of you have no problem with that. Some of you have no problem, man. You come to church. Oh, you all pumped up. You, you eating from the Lord's table. Man, you putting it in. You choking it down. You're excited. But friend, the rest of the week, you eat at the enemy's table. Oh, let me say that again. I don't know if that's getting in our ears and hearts today. Oh, some of you ain't got no problem with Sundays and Wednesdays. But some of you have problems with Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays. Because, listen, you go to another table. You're so used to coming on Sundays and Wednesdays to church and getting a little bit fed, eating a little bit. But you, before you even get home, you begin to start back here eating at the devil's table on YouTube, on Facebook and things or the enemy's robbing your time. Oh, listen to me today. If some of your phone broke, you'd have a nervous fit. You'd be down there the next day signing a new contract for four or five years, spending that money buying you that newest iPhone. I ain't lying. Listen, some of you go through phones so fast. Because why? You're eating from it. You're fulfilling your emotions and desires and, and, and mind. You don't have to sweat and work to do anything. You just punch a little button. Or you can just tell Siri what you want and she'll find it. I feel that mad spirit in some of you right there. Yeah. Don't mess with my phone. Well, you know what? Some of your phones is going to take you to a devil's hell. And you're going to burn because you're not using it for good. You're using it for bad. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. And listen. It doesn't have to be bad to be wrong. All is, you see, all the enemy is interested in is taking your time away from God. Because he knows if he can get your time away from God, then you're going to eat what he's got to offer you. That's why people are so mad, mad. You listen to me today. Oh, you listen. To, there's a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, I, I want you to know I want to stay at the Lord's table all the time. I want to eat at the Lord's table all the time. My God. Oh, hallelujah. I just don't want it to be said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. My Lord, I want to be glad every day that I'm going to get in the presence of the Lord every day when it counts Monday. I want to say this is a day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. But you know what? Uh, you know what? We, we, we live, we won't eat at the gray table. The, I don't have it up here today, but the gray table is you take a little bit of this and you take a little bit of that and you mix it together and you say praise the Lord to the Lord and you say I love the world. Listen to what Ephesians 6 and 12 says. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and what? 
powers. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and and and. and of this world and against spiritual wickedness and high. We're, you mean to tell me we're wrestling powers we're wrestling powers that want to keep me away from the power because if it keeps me away from the power then I have no power to resist the enemy I'm going to tell you what you cannot resist the enemy when you live and you eat and you spend time with him if I told some of you we're getting rid of internet, you would get mad. Yeah, yeah, it would. Internet, get rid of it. Oh, are you crazy? Everybody's doing it and they got big churches. Oh, does big churches mean that you're going to be saved? You see, I'm, what my danger is, we're so used to, to this that it doesn't bother us. That's why some of you come to church today and you walked and talked and didn't pray because you're eating this. Because anybody would want to come to church surely would want to pray. Surely want to get along and talk to God. Surely uh, they want their sacrifice to be the right kind. You know what? Oh, we we want to put a we want to bring the old spotty prayer that's got spots all over and say, God, here's my prayer. Why don't you clean your prayer life up? Why don't you clean your worship life up? Why don't you clean your spirit up? Listen, we're wrestling powers and, and things of this world. Uh, that's why when the demonic spirits are attached to your problems, you know what many of your problems are? It's got the spirits attached to it. That's why you can't easily get over some problems because they're spirits. There are spirits attached to some of your problems. And you think, well, it's just normal. It's just normal. <coughs> it's just normal for me to be depressed. It's just normal for me to be a loser. It's just normal to me to say, well, I can't live for God like that. It's just normal to say, well, I can't sacrifice and give up this. It's just normal. I'm going to tell you what. You better get out of normal. You better get out of the normal. Hallelujah. Because, listen, everything about this table is sacrifice. Everything about this table is true. Everything about this table is real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm telling you today, there are spirits attached to some of your problems, and you got to realize that demonic spirits attach themselves to our lives, to problems in our lives. If you keep having things repeated over and over, things you fell in over and over, that means you've got a spirit attached to it. And it said some things can only go by prayer and fasting. And if you're not praying and fasting, then you are repeating it over and over and over and over and over. But oh, hallelujah. But when you eat from this table, you want to pray. You want to fast. You after the things of God. Hallelujah, my God. That's why people say, well, I don't feel like I can do it. I can't make it. I feel like quitting. I feel like giving up. Yeah, you know why? Because you're eating from the table of give up. You're eating from the table of failure. You cannot, you cannot eat from this table and be a loser. You cannot eat from this table and be depressed. You cannot eat from this table and kill up. I'm going to tell you what because he went all the way up the cross the hill. I'm going to tell you when you, you'll go all the way. 
what table are you eating at today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time. Oh, the enemy wants you to stay here. Stay here. Oh, don't. When that preacher's asked somebody to fast, you don't lift your hand. You don't sign the calendar. Oh, some of your names ain't even been on the calendar. But you want your name on the roll. But the way you keep your name on the roll is you get your name on the calendar and you say, Lord, this day I'm sacrificing for you. I'm going to give a sacrifice to you. But you know what? You show me somebody that don't sacrifice. I show you somebody that gets blown away with everything that comes against them. You show me somebody that, that sacrifice when the wind blows. They push back. They stand up. They push back. I'm telling you what we need. We need some pushbackers. We need some people that's real. We need some people committed. Hallelujah. Brother Lambert, you sound like you're mad. I am mad. I'm mad at the devil. It's one thing to be, he said, be angry and sin not. But you can be mad at the devil. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what today. Some of you need to get mad at the devil because he ain't your friend. And the things he's been putting and trying to put in your life, it's not of God. It's to pull you away from God. It's to bind you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I come today to get somebody to switch from this table to come to that table. I wish I could get somebody quit eating what the enemy's got and say, wait a minute. I got to have something that's real. I got to have something that's real. I got to have something that's real. But you know what? As long as you're at this table, you can chase every skirt of every girl. You can chase every tight pants of every man. And man, and you're just okay. And you feel all right. And you're going to sing the songs of God. And you can say amen. But friend, you ain't going to make it. You got to. I wish I could get somebody today. Get up from this wrong table. Get some chains out of their lives. Get some things out of their lives. I'm going to tell you what you come here to church and you got chains on you and they say break every chain but you don't want it broke because you like being in bondage to the enemy when I think about Cinderella Cinderella I want you to know she was poor Cinderella didn't have a whole lot Cinderella become a slave to people that was not even the blood of her own home she was a slave she was in bondage she had to do everything the wicked stepmother said she had to wash the clothes she had to do the dishes she had to clean the house she had to do everything the end I'm going to tell you what, but one night she went to a palace. One night something happened to her. You know what? I wish it happened to you today. I wish it happened to you today. But one night she went to the palace and she danced with the prince and she found out, wait a minute, I'm in love with the prince. I'm going to tell you what tonight. You got to realize there's a prince that's waiting on you. There's it's a prince. I'm going to tell you. Oh, hallelujah. One night she found out, listen, I'm not supposed to be a slave. But I'm going to tell you, on one night she went from poor being a slave. Hallelujah. To the next couple of weeks she became, hallelujah, a queen. I'm going to tell you, in one night and everything the prince had when they got married, it was hers. You listen to me when I sup with him and I'm with him. Everything he has belongs to me. <laughs> Oh, listen to me. Oh, listen to me, please. Come on. Some of you, you come to church and all you think, I'm just a slave of the enemy. Oh, I'm never going to be free. I can't quit doing this. I can't quit. But if you could ever spend just a little time with the prince, if you could ever get your eyes on the prince. <coughs> and then one night, Everything changed. 
I'm telling somebody tonight, you listen to me. I look at your faces. I know where you're eating at. I'm your pastor. I know by your spirit. If you lift your hands or don't lift your hands, if you've got a smile or not, it tells me where you eating. I guess that's where my greatest frustration is, is I know where you're eating and you don't listen to me. And you keep doing your own thing. I can handle it, Brother Lambert. Oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just playing with it, Brother Lambert. I'm going to tell you what. It reminds me of a story. One day I was in the barber shop in Derrida, Louisiana, getting my hair cut. And the barber I knew all my life began to tell me a story. He said, listen, I can't believe my son did it. I didn't know what his son did. He said, I can't believe. I said, what did he do? I didn't think it would be that bad. Was the, he's a good man, you know. But he said, my son began to listen to, to, to hard rock music and acid music. And, and all it had was kill, 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 kill. And he said, day in and day out, he listened to that music. He said, one night, my son and another the young man went and got picked up somebody and did what the song said and killed him, killed him. I'm going to tell you what, when you listen to the music of this world and you listen to the things of this world, I'm going to tell you what, it's trying to put something in you. It's trying to put something in you. And you say, Brother Lambert, I can help. No, you can't. You're not talking, I'm talking to every person in this building. It might not be music. But the enemy's got some kind of avenue onto you to make you doubt God. Be angry at God. You listen to me today. Oh, hallelujah. I want to get somebody away from this table. I want to get you quit drinking from the enemy's table. Every time you drink from the enemy's table, you start feeling bad. You feel depressed. You feel sick. And you eat from the enemy's table. And you wonder why. You don't even want to come to church. I don't even want to go down there. I want to go to another church. I'm going to tell you what. You can go to another church. Don't mean you can switch tables. You carry your table with you. You carry your table with, but you know what? If you get rid of this table today, you won't want to leave church. You want to get involved in church. You want to do something in church. You want to be a part of church. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I could get somebody away from this table. I wish I could get somebody away from this glass. Quit drinking punishment. Quit eating from the enemy's table. But you see, there's another table. You see, this table, all it has is chains. It has bread of sorrow and has wine of desires and chains. But I want you to know, all the time you hear, there's a light shining at that table. Hallelujah. There's a light shining. Oh, and I like what the Bible said. And the light, it shined in darkness. And darkness couldn't comprehend it. I'm telling you. Somebody today, you need to see the light today. You need to see the light today. You need to see the light. Hallelujah. Walk in the light. Oh, hallelujah. Live in the light. And the light's calling. And the light's drawing. If you tired of darkness, if you tired of down and depression and sickness and, and quitting and blaming, hallelujah. There's another table today. There's another table. Hallelujah. And it's got light. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. I'm going to tell you. Oh, the light. The light, the light, oh hallelujah, it's burning, the light. The Bible said men love darkness more than light. Oh, I'm going to tell you what, you need to fall out of love with darkness. And you need to fall in love with light today. You need to realize, listen, there's another table. And when you sup with the Lord, you come to church and they start in prayer time. And they start singing. That's when you start supping. Hallelujah. You start eating. 
eating, you start eating. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, sup when victory. Uh, you know what? You go from eating failure to eating victory. You start eating victory. Hallelujah. My Lord. Well, when I ate over there, I didn't feel like I could do anything. But when I eat over here, I feel like I can do anything. I feel like I can do anything. I feel like I can do all things. You know why? Because, hallelujah, I came out of him and I came in him. Woo! I'm telling you today. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. It bothers me. People don't want to teach Sunday school. People that don't want to do nothing around the church. Because you know what that tells me? You ain't eating here, baby. Because when you eat here, you want to reach the world. When you eat here, you want to touch everybody, reach everybody. Hallelujah. When you eat over there, it's all about you. It's all about what you want. When you eat over here, it's about what he wants. Oh, listen to me. When you drink over here, you listen to me. The blood in this cup, it's not the devil's blood. The blood in this cup is your blood. You sacrifice your hope, your victory, your future, and you gave it to the devil. The Bible said that in the New Testament of Revelation that Jezebel was drunk on the blood of the saints. But over here, it's the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, that washes me clean. Hallelujah. You feel dirty? Drinks. Get a hold of what makes you clean. Oh, the more you drink, the more you, you lose guilt. You lose shame. Hallelujah. You lose everything. To you, and you start gloving again. Hallelujah. You eating deliverance. You eating deliverance. Hallelujah. My Lord. He told him to kill that lamb. Put the blood on the door. Because deliverance coming. I'm going to tell you what. Hallelujah. When you put the blood on your door. And you eat of the bread, the lamb. You're saying, hey, deliverance is coming. Woo. Almost spit out my bread. Oh, hallelujah. My Lord, can't spit your bread out. I can't spit my victory out. Hallelujah. I can't give up my joy. You see, I can't get some of you taste. I can't get some of you believe it. I can't get some of you believe there's victory. I can't get you to eat this. But you know what the Bible said? Oh, taste. Oh, taste. And see that the Lord is good. Woo! Now listen to me. Listen to what he says. Psalm 23 and 5 says, that He prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemy. <laughs> he has anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. God's got a table. God's got a table. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God's got a table. I'm telling somebody today, you get your eyes off what the enemy's got to offer you. You get your eyes off what the world's got to offer you. God's got a table. God's got a table. Hallelujah. Oh, who's it prepared for? Who is it prepared for? I asked you the question. Who is it prepared for? I tell you who it's prepared for. It's prepared for you and me. Oh, some you can't even see this table right now. I watch some of your faces. You you got your head down, minds of the places. Oh, you can't even see the table. Oh, you so used to misery, you don't know what joy is. You so used to being down, you don't know what victory is. But I'm gonna tell you what, God's prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemy. And I'm gonna tell you what, on that table is everything I need. Hallelujah. If I need healing, it's on the table. 
If I need victory, it's on the table. If I need a breakthrough, it's on the table. If I'm hungry, it's on the table. I'm going to tell you what. If God prepares it, everything you need is on it. And who, want, who wants it today? When you sit at the Lord's table, you share his life. <coughs> Maybe that's what people don't want to do. They don't want to share his life. You share his life and you share your life with him. You share victory. You share sacrifice. You share joy. You share the blood of Jesus. You share salvation. You share mercy and grace. You share forgiveness. You share healing. You share peace. You share blessings. You share life. You share the power of the cross. Hallelujah. Every time, every time you eat from this bread, you're saying I am a winner every time you eat from this bread and you drink from this cup you're saying I am a winner I am a winner I am a winner Every time you eat it, you're telling sickness. You're telling the devil. You're telling the powers of darkness. I don't belong to you. Every time you eat of it, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you take of the cup, you know what you're doing? You're rebuking that enemy. You're rebuking the enemy. Hallelujah. Why? Why? How am I rebuking the enemy? How am I having joy and victory and all that? Why? Because I'm in a covenant with Jesus Christ. You know why? I'm eating at this table. I'm in a covenant. I'm in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. Hallelujah. I need to tell the enemy, I'm in a covenant authority relationship. Hallelujah. When you go to set the table of the Lord, I'm going to tell you, everything you need is there. Everything's here. Praise God. Hallelujah. The covenant power with God. Listen to what Matthew 26 and 26 to 29 said. And when, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it he blessed it you know what it's blessed stuff I'm eating I'm not eating cursed stuff I'm eating blessed stuff hallelujah people say what you eat is what you are oh hallelujah I'm eating blessed stuff I'm eating broken stuff hallelujah and when I drank from that cup he said listen don't just drink a little bit of it drink it all drink it all I'm going to tell you what if you You'll drink it all and you eat from the things of God. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have your hands up. You're going to have your head up. Hallelujah. You're going to be excited. You're going to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen to what he said in John 6 and 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I am in him. That's what it's about. It's about getting in him. It's about him in me. Oh, the hope of glory. I'm telling somebody today, oh, keep Jesus in. Keep Jesus in. Hallelujah. Oh, you see the devil, he has a future. He's already broadcast. We already know where the enemy's going, but don't go with the enemy. Don't go with the enemy hallelujah for this purpose the Bible said the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the enemy of the devil I'm going to tell you why this table here is destroy that works of that table I'm telling somebody today if you'll let this table help you it'll make you destroy them things over there listen to what he said and he had spoiled the principalities and powers and made a show of them openly and triumphant over them in it. My God, triumphant over the enemy. My Lord 
was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He come to destroy the works of the enemy to make them at an open shame. Every devil, every disease, every demonic spirit is publicly embarrassed because my God was victorious. I want somebody to come to music today. You're going to claim victory over demonic spirits in your life. You need to tell every spirit that's coming against your home, against your family, against your future, against your finances, every spirit. You need to put them on notice. I'm in a covenant with God. I'm in a relationship. I see a lot of people that was on Facebook and, and a lot of them on, on their Facebook page says, I am in a relationship. And you know what that's telling everybody else? I'm not available. I'm not available. You need to tell the enemy, I'm not available. I'm in a relationship. Why would I want to come to what you have when I am having everything in my life today? I'm in a relationship. I'm eating. I'm eating blessed stuff. I'm eating, I'm eating wholesome stuff. I'm eating right things. You know why? Because I want to feel good about me. I want to feel good about my God. I want to feel good about my salvation. I don't want to have to come to church because it's duty. I'm not coming because it's Sunday. I'm not coming because it's Wednesday. I'm coming because of him. I'm coming because I want him in my life. I want the light in my life. I want to walk in the light that I don't stumble and that I don't fall. You see, today, I wish to God, I want you to notice the enemy was never broken for you. He never sacrificed for you. All the enemy does is he takes and he takes and he takes and he takes and he takes till there's nothing more to take. But my God, he doesn't take, he gives. He gives life. He gives hope. He gives peace. He gives forgiveness. He gives kindness. He gives gentleness. He gave his blood. He gave his time. He gave his sacrifice. If it's all about you today, maybe you over there at that table. But he says, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise and walk. I got something to give. I got something to give. I got life to give. There's hope, Lindsay. There's hope. There's victory. There's forgiveness. There's healing. There's miracles. I got something to give today. I got something. There's a future. There's, there's song leaders and, and Sunday school teachers. I got something to give. I got something to give. Ministries. Ministries. I got something to give. Such as I have, I give thou unto thee. If you're offended and you're easily angered and you're easily messed up, that tells me you have the attributes of the enemy. But why men spit on him, why men slapped him, 
He didn't open his mouth to say a word. Some of you just want to open your mouth and just let the devil come out your mouth. Church. There's a table. And what table you eat is what you're going to produce. There's a table of no sacrifice. There's a table of no blood that can cleanse, but chains that can bind. World that takes away. And you've got to ask yourself today, why am I so short? Why, why, why don't I pray? How come I don't read my Bible? How come I got time for everything else? How, t- how can I run my phone down three times a day and, and be on it all the time? And <coughs> but I come to church. And the only thing that goes on my mind, I hope the service don't last long. I hope nobody prays for me. I hope nobody puts their hand on me. I, I hope nobody, I hope nobody comes over my seat and asks me, oh, don't touch me. Oh, I, I'm gonna tell you what, friend. Oh, you're gonna be lost. You're gonna be lost. You're gonna be lost. You're gonna be lost. I'm gonna tell you. Oh, I wanna eat from God. Oh, I wanna taste. I wanna be. I want victory. I want the joy. I want the smile. I want to shout. I want to dance. I want it all back. As they begin to sing today. I wish I could have done better on this message because I haven't reached some of you. Some of you are just out of my reach. Some of you, the devil's got your ears so deaf and your eyes so blind that you can't even see life that's in front of you. Come join the sinners who have been I'm just going to go to church so I can find girls. I'm just going to go to church so I can find boys. I'm just going to go to church so I can find activity. No, I'm going to church so I can find Jesus. I'm going to church so I can find salvation. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man of the world the love of the father's not in him sit down and be set free come to the table has God talked to you in this message today has God talked to you to the table oh brother Lambert it's just a game on my phone well how long were you on it How long did you pray? How long did you read your Bible? How long did you see God? Three hours go by and you're still on your phone and you ain't talked to the Lord and you're empty and you're dying. It might not be sin, but it's killing you. Who wants? Who Come wants truth? The sinners, who who wants righteousness? Who wants holiness? Who wants separation? Come ye out from the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Touch no unclean thing. Touch no unclean thing. Then I will receive you. Are you so used to touching unclean Come things? Sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place. Some of you touch unclean Inside things every day. Sit down and be What are you touching? Come to the table.
Some of you got spirits. It's got a hold on you. My Lord, right now in your mighty name. Lord, we are in a covenant promise with you. I ask right now, every demon, every demonic spirit, every power of the enemy, we take authority, we take dominion right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. My God, I plead your blood. We take authority. We cast them things out of our lives. We bind the works of the enemy. We bind the works of the enemy. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got to break those chains. You got to break them chains. You got to break them chains. You got to break them holes. Join the sinners who have been Come on. Come on. Come on. You got to break them. Sit down and be. You need to let that enemy know. I'm in a relationship. from the enemy's table. I'm telling somebody today, I'll try to get you away from eating over at the enemy's table. Oh, it ain't bother me, Brother Lambert. Look, Brother Lambert, I'm still coming to church. I'm still lifting my hands. I'm still telling God I love him. I'm going to tell you what. You might be telling him, but you ain't showing him. He said, people draw nigh to me with their mouth but they won't give me their heart. They give me their hands, they give me their mouth, but they don't give me their heart. They said, oh Lord, I love you. Oh Lord, I'm living for you. I'm afraid to say today that some of you spent 10 times more on your phone than you did in prayer. It's probably even 20 or times more. No wonder you can't believe God for healing. No wonder you can't believe God for victory. No wonder you can't believe God for miracles. Because we're not eating from the place of miracles. We're not eating from the place of revival. We're not eating from the place of blessing. Oh, Brother Lambert, I just feel like my life is cursed. No, where you eating is cursed. Because God doesn't make no curse. The Bible said that he will heal all diseases he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes I am healed 
You can't eat that and not get that. You can't eat here and not get that. You can't eat here and still be mad at somebody. But when you eat here, you forgive everybody that's done you wrong. You forgive everybody that's talked about you. You forgive everybody that's treated you bad. And you have love one to another. You shall know my disciples by their love one to another. If you're mad at another saint of anywhere, then you have that same attribute as the enemy because he's the father of it. Church, please, I'm, I'm begging you. The reason why some of you are not so spiritual because you're eating from the wrong place. It's not that the enemy has power over you. You surrender your power to him. The enemy has not power to make me do anything. He ain't got that power. But when I eat from his table, I surrender because I become in fellowship with him. And I commune with him. So if he's mad at God, I'm going to be mad at God. If he's hateful, I'm going to be hateful. If he tells what's on his mind to everybody, I'm going to tell what's on my mind to everybody. over here I take on a light don't want to give me the light but when I eat here I become a light in the world when I go to my family I have light when I go to my job, I have light. The Bible said, let your light shine. Let your light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let my children see when, when the enemy's knocking, trying to blow my house down, but I got light. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. Don't let Satan blow it out. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Glory. I'm fine. No, don't worry about it. When you got wax on your hands because you've been holding up a light. Can't let it go out. Paul said, I've been through a lot, but I ain't let it go out. I've been shipwrecked, but I didn't let it go out. I've been snake bit, but I didn't let it go out. I've been in prison, but I didn't let it go out. Didn't let it go out. But I let it shine. Would you just close your eyes today? Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. For every mountain, 
for every valley, for every trial. The Bible said, he that endure to the end shall be saved. Church, I'm calling you. I'm calling you. I'm calling you to prayer. I need you to step up in prayer, church. If some of you had to pray to, 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 to save your life, you couldn't pray enough today to do it. Because you don't see the urgency or the need for prayer. Because I'm just not excited about the things of that table. I'm just not excited about that. Because I'm eating over here. <laughs> Church, please, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do today. Maybe you need to take the things off and even just like start peeling things out of your life start breaking them holes that the enemy has in your life start tearing them things that become a part of you and cast off the works of darkness and put on the light I wonder today Who's going to make it and who's not going to make it? Oh, Jesus' name. Lord. I don't know what else to do, Lord. I have tried to reach some in this place today and I haven't reached them. I have tried to wake them up, but I can't wake them. I tried to touch their emotions and their hearts, but I can't reach them, God. God, they're going to be lost unless you touch them, God. They're going to be lost, God. They're going to look right. They're going to act right, but not be right, God. Lord, I plead your blood over every person in this building today. All that's over the internet, God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord. Let our appetite be for the things of heaven and not the things of this earth. Let our affections be set on things that are above and not beneath. Let our ways please you, Lord, that we might walk in the light as you're in the light. Jesus' name. Lord, you speak to us. You said that man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. God, we need life, we need you, Lord, to live. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus' name. Somebody's eternity is on the line. Somebody's future is on the line. Somebody's marriage is on the line. Some of you never finish the things in your life. Some of you never has that problem of finishing things. I'm going to tell you, you better finish this thing today. You better make your calling and your election sure today. 
You see, if it was if I could today, I tell us, I would say, church, let's get rid of internet. If I could say that today. But we're too intertwined with it now. We're too wrapped up and involved in it now. But I promise, I feel like it's draining the life out of many. It's draining the victory and the hope out of many. I believe that with all my heart today. You may be seated. I've tried in my simplicity, simpleness to help us today. I wish there was more that I could have done for you. It's a terrible thing for God to have a table prepared. But for us not to eat at it. It's terrible that God prepared a table. Went out of his way to put on what we need. For only for us to refuse to eat from it. The prodigal son said that his father had more, that his servants had more than what they needed. They wasn't hungry. They wasn't in a famine. He said, my servants have more. Why, he starved in a pig pen. Some of you are so starving, but not wanting to eat at the Father's house. I'm through. God bless you today, church. <sighs> Jesus' name. I want us to remember our books. I want to pray over our books. You know, these people in these books, a lot of them at the wrong table today. The Bible said, What silver man sowed that he reaps. And they're sowing to their flesh, and they're sowing to the world. And so they reap from the world. But if we can pull them away from the world and get them sowing to the things of God, then they can reap from the things of God. I want us to stand and stretch our hands this way today. Do you have anything to give? Do you have anything to give? Are you so empty you have nothing to give? Listen, some of you wrote names in these books and you don't even pray over them. 
I wrote, we anoint these books, we pray in faith over these books, my God. Lord, for every name, every person, every situation, every problem, my God, to move upon. God, pull them from the table of the enemy. Pull them from the table of the enemy, God. Pull them from the table of darkness, God. Pull them from the deep and from the things of the world, Lord. God, that they might find the truth, Lord, God, to move. That they might find miracles and healings and victories, God. <coughs> Oh, in your mighty name, in your mighty name, Lord, I call and ask in Jesus' name today. And everybody say amen. I want us to remember those that are sick today and God to touch them. Remember Brother Dave, brother, God bless Brother Dave. But remember Brother Roberts, God to help him. They had to run back to the emergency room, the doctor of the day. But remember God to touch his leg, touch his body. Remember those call, call. Somebody need to call them. Let them know you missed them. Remember Mr. Shasta and, Ra and Reagan. She's still sick. Remember them. Remember Charity and, and Sabrina. Remember all those that's not here today. Praise God. If the ushers come today, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings today. I want y'all to think about this. We, I pledge this church to help Brother uh, Lawrence and them. They got a trailer, got a trailer and don't have no appliances in it and, and he didn't know what to do. But I just felt like we are to help them. And if you want to, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's fine. But God's going to bless it some way. And, and uh, between now... And, and we got a month to, take, to get money for it. Uh, uh, I figure probably somewhere around $2,000 is what it take to maybe get appliances and uh, help them out. Uh, praise God. If you, I, I, I want to help them. I, I, I want this church. That, I want God's blessings up on this church. You, when you bless the man of God, you can't help but bless. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, I want you to think about what you might can offer. Uh, and, uh, and maybe next Sunday we're going to take some pledges on it. But I want you to pray over it this week. And if all you can give is $5, then you give that $5. <laughs> Praise God. But I want, us to, I want us to help them. And uh, praise the Lord. And I believe God's going to bless this church. Uh, because when you give, it shall be given. Praise God. So when you give, it shall be given. If you be tight, it be tight with you. I, I, I want the windows of heaven just be flowing my way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe I won't get to eat, eat steak that week and drink Dr. Pepper. You know, if some of you just give up uh, your coffee, my Lord, that'd probably be $500. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't be building no more coffee shops around here. But I listen, sacrifice. And we do sacrifice. And I appreciate everything everybody's ever given. But listen, we can't stop giving because when we stop giving, we stop the flow flowing. Praise God. Lord, we love you. We're going to, after take up this offering, and uh, we're just going to wait the next Sunday, take up that children's offering. Huh? But we still take it up, though. Praise God. I'll give it to you. Ain't nobody going to steal it. Praise God. Hallelujah. If they do, we will get them away from that table and get them over here. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love y'all. Let's remember Wednesday night service. Invite somebody. Praying your tithes and offering after it be dismissed in the name of Jesus. If you need the credit card machine, Brother Ronnie's got it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't find the button.